Hello everyone! So today I wanted to talk about the books that I read last month because one of my goals for this year is to read 100 books and I've read some, so let's get going. The first book is Q is for Quarry by Sue Grafton. I gave this book a 5 out of 5. I really like Sue Grafton and I really like the Kinsey and Mahone books, which is what this series is. It's basically an alphabet. A is for alibi, B is for burglary, Q is for quarry, X marks the spot. It's great! I really enjoy it. They're quirky, they're fun. It features a sort of private detective. I'm gonna say middle age. It's set in the 80s, 90s, and I think she's about 30 or 40 years old, and it's so much fun. I, I really enjoy each and every one of these, and I think my favorite part is the fact that it doesn't have to be read in order. You can pick up whatever part of the alphabet and read it, and it'll make total sense. This one features family drama about a quarry and a murder that took place 15 years ago and trying to find the the culprit of said murder. So if you like murder mysteries as much as I do, you're going to love this book, which is why I gave it a 5 out of 5. The second book I read was Empire Falls by Richard Russo. This one was a Pulitzer Prize winner. I don't remember what year it was a Pulitzer Prize winner, but I do know that it won a prize. <laughs> this follows a small town sort of surrounding a diner called Empire Falls. I'm not sure where I expected this book to go, but I know it didn't go there. It went a thousand other places, and I understand why it won that Pulitzer Prize, because the twists, the turns, the character development, all of the storylines twining into one, all of the connections made, it was absolutely fantastic, and a lesser writer would have made an absolute mess out of it. That being said, it wasn't for me. <sighs> like, I can recognize that it is a good book without saying that I really enjoyed it or I enjoy that genre. So for me, I give it a 4 out of 5, but if that sounds like something you'd like, read it. I highly recommend it. The next book is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. This one has been all over the internet, so I'm sure you've heard of it. I gave it a 4 out of 5. George can back me up. When I reached the twist in one of the later parts, one of the later twists, I screamed. Like, I actually screamed. This book is a sort of science fiction, but not in a sci-fi way, but more of in a piece of YA or just adult fiction that pertains to science coding and gaming or game development, game design, without giving too much away. I wouldn't recommend this to a teenager. I actually think that the target audience is higher than a teenager in terms of life experience. I would recommend it to anybody with some caveats. There's a lot of self-loathing, suicidal ideation, abusive relationships. There are a lot of triggers about this book, so the story graph has an excellent section of potential triggers, so go ahead and look through that before you decide to read this book, because I know everybody is hyping it, but not everybody is addressing that part of it. I really enjoyed this. It helped that I was reading it while in the vicinity of someone who does coding. <laughs> so if I had questions about the technicalities of things, I could ask him about it. But that isn't necessary. I think that just adds to the background of the story. I wasn't really into this story until the middle, and I absolutely hate it when characters, I guess, miscommunicate. Uh, when people don't communicate in books or stories, it really bothers me. When they use that lack of communication to create huge misunderstandings, it really bothers me. Like, just talk. And this book is full of just not talking, and it was so frustrating. Overall, four to five. Would I read it again? No. Would I recommend it to somebody? With a few caveats. So take that as you will. If you're into coding or gaming or any of that, check it out. It was well written. It's just not for me. The next book was Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. I gave this a three out of five. Now hear me out. Jane Austen, an excellent writer. Gothic novels, a really great genre. I do not think that this is Jane Austen's magnus opus. Is that the right word? The right phrase? I don't think this is her best work. In fact, I don't even think it's one of her better works. I think it's just an example of her work that fits into the gothic novel genre, and so everybody talks about it. Was it an interesting read? Yes. Was I bored out of my mind for quite a bit of it? Also, yes. If you're really into Jane Austen, I recommend it. If you're trying to learn about a gothic novel, 
I recommend it. Otherwise, I don't know if I would recommend this particular Jane Austen book or gothic novel to you, but you can make your own decisions. I'm just presenting this as a piece of literature that I read and that I rate three out of five, so take that as you will. The next and final book is Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn, which I gave a four out of five, or four and a half out of five. I absolutely hated the first part of this book. I hated both characters. I hated the plot. I hated the dialogue. I hated everything. It wasn't until I got to the second part that I it clicked for me what was going on and I was immediately engrossed. I think I read parts two and three in one sitting after taking a week to read part one. So if you're reading the book, just push past that. It'll make sense when you get to part two. I'm not going to tell you the twist because, well, that would be spoilers and if you're like me, you haven't seen the book movie or read the book before, so this was a new experience. I was reading this in Japan and George was with me and he's seen the movie and when I was describing my frustration and the things that were happening in the book, he says it sounds nothing like the movie. Now he hasn't read the book and I haven't seen the movie so I can't tell you if that's right or not, if I was just a bad storyteller or if he didn't understand the movie or I don't know what's going on, but I've been told that the movie and the book are different. So keep that in mind if you've seen one or the other before you go into the other one. They could be different. I enjoyed the heck out of it. I liked the fact that nothing was clear cut and that there were so many bits and pieces that could go together that didn't go together and then the whole mind game of the ending. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And I also hate to say it but the way that the police were portrayed is kind of accurate to real life. Now there's also a bunch of mind games being played but the fact that they honed it on one person and they didn't look at any other evidence except what you know sort of backed up their own preconceived notions. It's really telling of the police and I listen to a lot of true crime podcasts and I think a lot of the times that the murders go unsolved are when the police do something like that. I also read a stat somewhere, I don't know if it's as accurate or not, correct me, but there are more innocent people in US jails due to police incompetence than there are people in jail in Japan. Just, just think about that for a second. If you want to see how messed up the system is in a piece of fictional literature, Gone Girl is where it's at. I also really enjoyed the story, so I give that one a four and a half out of five. If you have read any of these books and you have opinions that are different than mine, let me know in the comments down below. If you have any suggestions for books I might enjoy based off of these books, also let me know. I'm always looking to add to my to-read list, even though I'm never going to get to all of the books ever. My life just isn't long enough. If you've read anything interesting this past month that you would really like to share, let me know, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!